Well, it took the spider deers out. I don't know if you can see in there. Pretty gross. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up. One side had two shims in it, the other side did not. This one has a spacer. This was off the top. That was off the bottom one. So, I guess we'll uh, try to put it back together. Better get it cleaned out. Oh, it did have one. There it is. Maybe I'll measure those and see what the difference is. Trying to set the oil seals. It ain't perfect, but it's getting in there. And then this one got in there earlier. That one actually gave me a harder time. How in the world do you get that on over the knuckle? It doesn't fit. So I don't tell you the instructions, but you actually have to cut it right at that little black mark there. It's separated. There's a metal ring inside. So just take a uh, razor blade and just cut right through it. You see right there. And then you just kind of twist it apart just enough to get it over the end of the knuckle. Got my kingpin shims. Measured these out using this little guy. Um, so passenger side had a really thick one in there. Significantly bigger than on the driver's side. So, well, I'm going to dig through this, come up with something very similar, and then install them and do my pull test. Alright, now after I had to clean it up and retorque these, I can't believe how many uh, lock washers I've gone through. I put an old one back on there and it seems to be holding fine. But the new ones I got from the store, they, uh, seem to split pretty easy. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Oh, hang on. Yeah, roughly about 14. I'm going to stick with it. It's pretty stiff. Don't do what I did, folks. I put the race inside without putting the stupid shims in there. So now i got to dig this thing back out with my little brass puncher. And you can see this little indent right there. Well, the bottom one has one too. So I've got to hit it there on both sides just so I can tap that guy back out and then find my shims and put it back in. This is the pinion for that Ford Dana 25. There's some chewed up oh, you can't really see it. Um, chewed up threads in there and there's metal slivers when I pulled the nut off there. 
little bird just cut the crap out of my hand. Finally stopped bleeding. But that nut is useless. Those threads I need repaired. And I don't have a die big enough for that. So I guess I can go down to the machine shop real quick. Have them uh, chase those for me. This wasn't really working, my little thread chaser. But these things are hardened, so there's no... No, uh, me f no fixing that one right now. All right, I'm back. About five minutes at a machine shop, and I got them to fix those threads for me. Um, this nut here, soft, soft metal. So, but trust me, it's sharp when it caught my finger right there with that little burr. Um, it's going in the trash. For the pinion setup, I'm going to use this one just to set it up, and then I did buy from Kaiser Willys. I did buy these. The, they said Dana 25 or Dana 44 pinion nut. Well, mine doesn't have a uh, cotter pin available. You know, but uh, it still fits on there. Obviously a different size than that one, but uh, thread size is still the same. Here is my carrier for the Dana 25. This is one of the bearings that needs to go on here. You would normally press these on with the shims here, but I don't know what shims I'm going to need, so I'm making a set of setup bearings. So I'll wallow out the hole just enough that you can slide these on and off without much trouble. Okay. Tap that in, pull it right off. So this allows me to put the shims that I can measure for here that were on here before. Put this bearing in, put the cup on, set this inside the housing, check my, my uh, pinion against the ring, make sure everything's right, check backlash. And then I'm going to get another set of these bearings, the real ones, and uh, replace them once I find out what my numbers need to be. So I'm working on that right now. I'm going to take this one down, just like this one here. Okay, so now I'm done with the carrier bearing setup bearings. So it fits on pretty good. It's fine because it just slipped on a second ago, so now I look like a liar. Come on now. There it goes. I could probably shave another little bit off of that one. There it goes. Pretty smooth. Leave that. We're gonna go install the cups and start putting some shims on this face here and put the bearing back in. Well, shoot. I don't know where that came from. It was not reported earlier when you pull up this, but now it's all over it. Alright, now I'm set up for backlash. I'd moved a 30,000th shim from this side to that side. And right now, it looks like I'm getting about 15, 18. I need 6 to 10. Right now, I'm way out. 2, 20. 1, 20. So I got about 19. Not nearly as bad. Now I've got five thousandths in this side and three thousandths in this side. So let me hook up the dial indicator and see what my backlash is. 
We're looking at about 14 now. Not good enough. So frustrating. Now I've only got a three. So I might take a half out of this one. Right at six, right where I need to be. Alright, so now I gotta take all this back out, leave the shims in their respective spot, and then I need to press on the real bearings, and then I can button this bad boy up. I forgot to check my pattern, so I'm about ready to do that here. Sounds really loose. Huh. I check my backlash again. Am I even touching? There's no difference. Contact there. This is really hard to see. Kind of right in the middle. This is really hard. All right, let me uh, do this off camera. It's still really hard to see, but I've got a pattern pretty close. It's center of those gears on both sides, which according to the chart, looks pretty good to me. And then I did set up my backlash again one more time, and I'm getting about anywhere from like six to eight, so pretty good here that's at seven and I had six earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this out pinion and the carrier and then uh, take it out back to the shop uh, the little press I have out there and press on my new bearings well, never mind I don't have the bearings I thought I bought them and I did I, uh, I actually bought them online. They still haven't been delivered yet, so I have my uh, setups. And I'm actually just going to go through the bin right now for the Dana 44 and make sure that when I get my other bearings that I have them on hand so that I'm not in the same situation. So, alright, back to work. What really grinds my gears is when you're getting a kit from a company that does a uh, you know, Jeep parts, um, they give you, sure, all the equivalent numbers, which is great, 
but they're not all the same brand. So I have Timken, Koyo, SKF, SNR, all a mix and match of everything. And I think in an attempt to kind of match some up, I, I bought a set with that number. It, it matches up on here. Um, it says number six, which goes on the pinion right there. Uh, this is made in China, which I think is garbage. The other ones are made in Japan or the United States or, um, you know, Timkins, um, Koyos, whatever. But uh, I bought that off of uh, Quadratech, I think it was. And wow, what a junk. I, I actually don't want to buy from Quadratech ever again because they took forever to get stuff to me. Um, well over two weeks. So anyway, that, that kind of is one of those things that just bothers me, but I'll, I'll take care of it. There's another one of those grinds in my gears. Let me get going on a project, and you think you have everything you need. I changed out the U-joint, came in the little box here with those clips. I need those clips. I have three of these little guys, four of those, three of these from the old one. One went flying off to Narnia. So now I gotta find online or go to a box store and buy them. These I can't use. I need these. Three is not gonna work. Hey folks, that's gonna wrap it up for the day. I am a little bit back sore and a little bit frustrated that I have to go on the internet now and go buy more stuff to match what I have. I'm sure the interchangeable numbers is fine, but you know, if I take my micrometer to those bearings, they're just slightly off. So that matters when I'm trying to set up my, my pinion and also the carrier because it will change the amount of um, shims that I have in there. So got to get on that. And uh, final also good news um, this week, I uh, found out I'm going to get a promotion to 03. So I'm a W2 right now. And a year and a half ago, I was an E7. I applied for warrant, you know, chief warrant officer. I got it. Then I went on to the current job I'm in right now, and apparently I'm doing well enough that they said, hey, guess what? You can go ahead and be an 03. I did have to apply for a waiver because I didn't have enough time in my current pay grade in order to um, officially be on the list for that promotion. So I applied for the waiver. They accepted it. They put me on the board panel. I don't get to sit there, but, you know, they go through my record. And then uh, I got selected. So I got selected number three out of six that they were taking, which is good news. Bad news is it requires a transfer. So since 2015 or so, when all of these videos started, you've watched me move from New Jersey to Virginia to another job in Virginia. I'm hoping this last job is going to be in Virginia just so I don't have to move the house, move the projects, move the dogs, whatever it is. And that will allow me to close out my career in the Coast Guard with uh, three more years doing whatever they have me doing. So good news, May 1st, promotion, pay raise, transfer. Okay, I'll check in with you guys soon. Have a good one. Have a good night. Thanks.